Volume and stuff. Everything should be good. Good. Okay. The accounting club. All of this sponsored by Career Services. So great to have you all here today. Uh, before we get started with our speaker, just a note for those taking the class: you need to sign in. The keyword is "Graded as Kickoff." For your information, this next Friday there will be uh, a big kickoff event, Flag Circle. This is to let everyone know about our Empower Your Dreams event, which will be in. I uh, would like to get started with a word of prayer, and Sister Jean Brown, if you could offer that for us. Heavenly Father, we are come before thee today thankful. We love thee, we love thy son Jesus Christ. We love being on this campus and the beauty and the surroundings. We're thankful that we can come and learn and um, be edified. Thank you for these speakers who came to uh, share their experience with us. Help us to be open to the spirit and learn. And again, we love thee and love thy gospel. And we say it in the name of Jesus Christ, amen. Amen. Thank you, Sister Brown. I would like to jump right in with our guest speaker. His name is Kevin Greer. He is the Managing Director of Accenture Federal Services, and we're pleased to have him here on campus. We do have a luncheon immediately after this event. We can accept the first 10 to 12 students. If, you're, if you'd like to speak more with our, our, our guest speaker and uh, have this lunch, it'll be at the end of the hallway in the corner of the HGB here on the second floor. And uh, we'll now turn the time over to Brother Greer. All right, aloha. Aloha. We don't, get to see it. we don't get to say that in Washington, D.C. very often, so it's a great way to start that. Uh, it's great to see, uh, great to see all of my kids and wife who were mandatory required to come here today. So, uh, by show of hands, how many are uh, required to be here? Any? A few? I guess I should say how many, uh, how many, how many volunteers are here just, just to learn. That's great. That's excellent. How many, uh, how many are business majors? Business majors. Okay, very good. Uh, how many computer science? Good, good. How many, uh, how many in entrepreneurship? Okay. And then how many, uh, how many in accounting? Hey, that's 47.9%. Excellent. <laughs> we're uh, we're glad to have you here, and uh, I will I will talk a little bit about uh, a little bit about uh, my journey and uh, how accounting influenced it. Um, but I will speak to the better, to the broader general consulting field because I think you guys are all in the right all in the right place. And have an incredible opportunity. So, uh, getting started. Um, I want to tell a story. Tell a story. It's uh, it's so great always to come back here to this campus. Uh, 20, 28 years ago, uh, I was here. I was in these uh, sitting in your same same seats. Uh, not in this building. This building wasn't here. But uh, same same classes, uh, same sea cider, same stir fries. Um, had a lot of a lot of great memories. And uh, back then, you know, back then I had the opportunity. Of meeting, of meeting my wife here, so uh, I remember seeing her across campus, and she was uh, she was beautiful. So her name is Shannon, and uh, from now on, whenever I say the word Shannon, you guys say beautiful. Okay. <laughs> All right. So uh, as I looked across campus and I saw Shannon, beautiful. Yes. Yes. I thought, what a great opportunity, but I will go and I will try to get a chance to meet her. So I went up and, uh, and I thought, how can I go about and meet her in a way that I could get to know her and share a little bit. So, um, so I thought about, why not go and uh, home teach her? So everyone say, home teach. Home teach. Yes. So I went over to uh, the Holly and I invited uh, Shannon. You. Yes. To come down. And I, uh, I met, I met, I met Shannon, and we yeah, had a great reason, had a great uh, opportunity to connect. 
Um, the, uh, the next week, I was in the uh, cafeteria, and she came down, and uh, the first thing she said is, um, you're not my teen home teacher. You're not even in my ward. <laughs> so uh, I replied, well, I'm your stay home teacher. <laughs> point time stood still and I can visually see this gray plastic tray coming down and hitting me on the head and uh, that's why I don't have any hair today <laughs> so I was there uh, I was there with all my uh, all my my homies and he, uh, they they all asked what a stay home teacher was too <laughs> so uh, so I tried again this is the second second opportunity. I went in and uh, I, I had some roommates. So one of my roommates happened to be dating Shannon. Yeah. You guys are right on. Okay. Uh, her roommate and her roommate said, "You should really go out with Kevin. He would be a fun date for you to go out with." At which point she said, "No, he doesn't even know which ward he's in." <laughs> so we decided that uh, that that did not work. But, uh, but I set a goal, and I went after the goal, and I wasn't going to let any obstacles get in the way. Okay, So then I, I received some PCC tickets, and I said, why don't I invite Shannon to PCC? <laughs> and uh, she, she accepted, and then a few days later, she backed out. So, um, and I think she, she did not find me very good looking. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> All right, so then I went to plan four, which was I was going to offer her and let her know I had a car, and if she ever needed a car, then I could transfer her. <laughs> Yet, no, that still didn't work. So I finally went to plan number five, which was at the end, at the end of the semester, there was a Poopy Loud Beach Luau, and she grudgingly agreed after my pursuits of the whole semester to come to the Luau for, or to come to the bonfire for one hour. So she came with her roommates, we came, we, we met, we talked for an hour, we liked a lot of the same things, we found that uh, there was a lot of special links, and at that point she was leaving to go to the mainland, and I will tell the rest of the story if we have time. Okay. All right. So I'm going to talk uh, a little bit about a uh, little bit a little bit about my journey. A little bit about uh, what is in store for you. How to get uh, how to get jobs. What's happening in the business world. Um, why your foundation and what you're doing right now is so important. Uh, why it's important to open your books and study a little bit. Um, things like that. So I am a, I am a CPA. I am an accountant. I love numbers. So we'll start with uh, start with just a few numbers, so you can get a chance to uh, know me a little bit. Um, maybe. Okay. So uh, here's some numbers. Um, if you know what the numbers are, then just uh, let me, let me know. We'll start with uh, number three. It's the uh, number of times that uh, I lived in Hawaii. Uh, grew up here for a few years. Um, went to school here, and then. Upon finishing a mission, I came back and uh, worked in Hong Kong. So, uh, three times I've lived in, in Hawaii for a total of, uh, total of uh, seven years. All right, number four is the number of employers that I've worked with. Uh, I just hit my 25th anniversary uh, here in January. So over the 25 years, I've worked for four different companies. Um, it's been a tremendous uh, experience to be able to um, Connect and weather weather tough times. All right, number five. Anybody know? Children. Number of kids. Good. All right. Anybody know how many uh, how many of our kids are BYU Hawaii? Four. Yes. The answer is four. For the back there. Good. All right. And I'm glad we haven't gotten kicked out of the university yet. <laughs> so four is uh, is the number. Uh, Thirteen point one. Anybody know? Half marathon. All right. I was forced to go to uh, sign up for a half marathon here in April. So April 16th. Uh, I do like to run, and this is a historic one down in, uh, in St. Petersburg, um, part of the Civil War reenactment. So it'll be fun. All right. 17. My age. 
Thank you. <laughs> All right. Now that's the number of cruises that we've been on. So we are. I'm a cruise addict, uh, as my wife is, and we were trying to stop that and on our last cruise, and then we bought two more cruises. So it's, <laughs> definitely, definitely have a problem. But we love, uh, we love to travel. All right. Twenty-five years married. Close. Number of years working professionally. Uh, few, few more than that. But that's, uh, that's how long you've we've been working. I can't believe it. All right. Fifty. Number of states. Number of states that we've taken all of our kids to. So Brandon, Tiffany, Ashley, Eric, Andrew, big travelers. We've lived West Coast, Midwest, and East Coast. So we've had the opportunity of really spanning out and seeing a lot of the country. Fantastic. All right, 1900? When you were born? <laughs> ah, yes. All right, bonus points for that one. Uh, 1900 is the number of steps up to the top of Machu Picchu. So in June, we are hiking to the top of Machu Picchu, so we are presently getting in shape. Um, so are you going to cruise to get there? Yes, I was, if, I was trying to put a cruise together with that, but it's not yet conceived. So, <laughs> All right, 50 million? Net worth. <coughs> Net worth. That's a good one. <laughs> that's, the, uh, that's the size of the uh, size of the financial management practice that uh, we built up at Accenture when I started seven years ago. So we got that up to a, an annual reoccurring revenue base of 50 million a year. Um, so when I came aboard, there was two of us, and then that other individual left and uh, able to uh, have great blessings and be able to work the Washington DC network very well and build up a, a big sustainable practice. All right, here, uh, here's, our, uh, here's our crazy clan. You can see um, us here up in the right. You can see <coughs> my wife is a fitness instructor. We all went to her fitness class uh, over Christmas time. So, and then we, uh, we all went to Star Wars over here. This is, uh, this is them if you see them. Okay. All right, so every one of us, uh, we, I, I love to hike. I uh, love to go on adventures. Uh, here, is, here, is, here is the mountain or pathway that I embarked upon. And all of you will have an opportunity to embark upon. Um, my, this journey for me really started uh, graduating here at BYU Hawaii in 1988. Okay, fantastic, uh, fantastic experience. My father taught here, had the opportunity of uh, sitting in on accounting, uh, being forced into accounting, I mean I chose accounting, <laughs> and then um, it really set an incredible foundation uh, for where I was able to go. I did work at the Polynesian Cultural Center, a canoe guide, and uh, had, had fond memories. Uh, after I graduated, and this was back in 1988, uh, then moved forward to be able to serve a mission, and I went to Japan, Sendai, Japan. Um, while I was in Japan, I had a great opportunity on the way back from my mission to stop here in Honolulu while still a missionary and interview with two accounting firms, uh, Ernst & Young and KPMG. I went home, uh, decided to spend a semester in Utah State, and October, early October, while I was there, Big snowflakes were coming down to the sky, and I went to my mailbox, and there was an offer letter from Ernst & Young saying, do you want to come and work in Honolulu? And I looked at the snowflakes, and I looked at my letter, and it was a pretty easy decision. <laughs> so I uh, came back uh, came back in January of 1990, started with, uh, started with Ernst & Young. Uh, how many of you guys uh, know the big four accounting firms by chance? Okay, you will all know them by the end of this presentation. All right, so started started um, started off with Ernst and Young. Did that for three years. Had a glorious experience. Um, worked at all different places around the island, um, different financial institutions, Bank of uh, Hawaii, State of Hawaii. Worked at uh, a lot of the travel bureaus, different hotels high-tech organizations, was able to travel in their island. Uh, really a wonderful experience uh, being able to travel around. Uh, in Laie, there used to be a Bank of Hawaii branch, which I was able to audit multi-years, as well as Kuhuku Hospital, 
right down the street. So I was able to do some healthcare auditing. Uh, so that was great. All right, after, uh, after that, um, our son Brandon was born. So he is our Hawaiian. And then after, uh, after that, we decided to move to Colorado. So we did. And I worked for two other smaller accounting firms. I decided after working for Ernst & Young, and we put in a lot of overtime, um, but I learned so much in that time, um, I decided to try a smaller firm and see what that would be like. Uh, maybe one that specialized. So I uh, specialized in financial institutions and in financial uh, accounting. Went forward to a lot of banks and branches and savings and loans across the western <laughs> United States. After that, I had an opportunity, uh, decided that graduate school was the right thing to do. So I went to my employer and asked, would you allow me to be able to uh, go part-time to school and be able to go to graduate school while, you know, while I'm working for you and continuing forward? And they said no. So we sold everything we had, moved in with mom and dad, in-laws, and uh, went full-time to graduate school. So University of Colorado Denver, I got an MBA with an emphasis in information technology. And that was a great, great milestone for me. It took my accounting from here, expanded it to a graduate degree, and opened up the world of technology consulting. So that was, a, that was wonderful. After that, I swore I would not go back to the big four because it's very intense, um, a lot of hard work and effort, uh, but, I, but I very much had appreciated it. And I had the opportunity of working in audit and in tax. The third group was really uh, consulting. So I had the opportunity uh, of interviewing and starting up with KPMG. So, but this time, I went to KPMG's consulting department. While working in consulting, I started working now in the federal government, federal government customers. First client was Department of Defense, and that was a tremendous uh, experience opportunity. From there, um, and I had been studying along the path at Ernst & Young, and again, just like the first story, if there's obstacles in your way, keep figuring out ways to get around them. And I did that with the CPA exam, finalized and finished that, and that was a great milestone. So in 1996, um, when you worked for Ernst & Young, you were forced to take it every six months with them, whether you're ready or not. So uh, eventually started to study, and getting the CPA was a huge milestone that opened up a lot of career opportunities. So from there, I started getting into professional associations. I got into the Association of Government Accountants, the Military Comptrollers Organization, and this opened up more doors. Now, it was at this time that, has anyone heard Enron? Any? A few? All right. So it was right around this time that each of the big four consulting organizations started to spin their consulting divisions off. They found a conflict with being able to go and audit a firm and also be able to provide strategic consulting and implementation services for them. Um, Enron was sort of the time frame that made it very aware uh, that Arthur Anderson back in the time was on both sides of the fence. KPMG spun off its consulting division, which became a big global worldwide name, uh, Bearing Point. PwC spun off its consulting division, which went over to IBM, and that started off IBM Strategic Consulting Services. And uh, Deloitte, Deloitte held on to their services. So from there, um, another huge milestone happened for me in the year 2002, and that was being able to be promoted up. Uh, and I had a very fast track of being able to be promoted from consultant to senior consultant to manager to senior manager and eventually up to partner. So I made partner with KPMG back in 2002 and it was at that time that I had moved to Indiana. We had offered up to start up an office for them and we began to build a practice and in building that practice I was able to take a fast track on the promotion path. Uh, no one had really offered that up, but I went to, I 
went to KPMG and said, if you move me out there, give me a shot to do this, and we'll see what we can do. And that was a great career opportunity that allowed me to be able to move, move up the ranks and be able to gain a lot of skills. So as that happened, um, I then began to start selling more work in Washington, D.C. So I was doing about half my work in Indiana, half my work in Washington, D.C., and I was traveling half the time. And it was a little bit challenging. So I said to the family, do you guys want to move? And they all said, no way. Um, and I said, well, it's the right thing to do. <laughs> Janet. That's right. So uh, we, decided to, we decided to move to Washington, D.C. We actually are in Virginia, which is just a few minutes off of, uh, out, of, out of northern Virginia, feeds directly into the Washington, D.C. area. So we're living in Virginia. All of the kids uh, were there. And I continued professional escalation of credentials. I'm a big believer, just like these when you drive on to BYU Hawaii, you will learn and then you'll go forward and you'll serve. And getting your degree should never be the stopping point. You should always go forward with more education, more certifications. And as a partner, I believed in that and continued to get uh, my PMP, professional management, professional certification, uh, CGFM, CDFM, which are certified defense and government financial management positions. It's the equivalent of a CPA for the government. So you've got those certifications. And continuing to, to build. So right at this time, a bearing point was getting acquired. And in this acquisition, they were going to get sucked up into Deloitte. It was at this point that Accenture had came after me pretty hard with headhunters and said, we want you to come aboard and we want you to start up this financial consulting practice um, to be able to help support, help support and build us up a management consulting finance practice. So I made the decision, um, a lot of prayers, and decided I would leave. I went to Accenture and started this up. And it was at first a little bit of a lonely path. Um, being there, I did bring over a number of senior managers and managers um, from Bearing Point and other organizations. Um, but from there, the last seven years I've been there. And uh, again, I've just had a tremendous experience uh, building up the practice. Um, in doing such, I've had the opportunity of bringing aboard um, about five or six BYU Hawaii students. And that's been tremendous. So I do look for the, I do look for the best of the you here, and for those of you who are looking forward to moving there, um, there are a lot of openings. We have, we have about 700 openings right now in our federal practice. Now, many of them are technology related, but we have many that are in the management consulting practice. So I'm going to talk a little bit about Accenture here now, and then we'll go into a little bit, uh, a little bit about about the industry. Now, how many how many of you are how many of you have heard of Accenture? anyone heard of Accenture? Well, that's pretty good. Okay, that's pretty good. All right, so maybe maybe 25%. So let's watch, um, let's try to watch a little video blurb here on Accenture. And I'll come back and maybe we will. Because that's why I'm a technology guy, because that's why the technology is not working. Thank <laughs> you. 
70 languages. Or BCI Drill, where our award-winning customer service team connects with more than 9,000 customers every day and 2 million every year. BCI Drill and Accenture are on track to deliver more than $250 million in savings during their 10-year agreement. We have similar stories in virtually every industry. In fact, Accenture helped 1 million Americans complete 30% of Black Friday's total online spending. We help process more than 11 million credit card transactions every night. And we work with the leading payer companies to enroll over 20 million members in their health plans to improve the health and wellness of more than 48 million people. So, how do we meet the needs of so many diverse organizations? The recipe is simple. We start by listening, really getting to know and understand our clients. Then, we add three ingredients. First, our hands-on client experience across all <coughs> functions and in 19 industries, supported by our knowledge gleaned from our industry and functional-based research covering more than 6,000 companies. Second, our award-winning breadth of services and solutions, expanding our core business of consulting, technology, <coughs> and outsourcing, with an expanded focus on a variety of strategic growth areas. And third, our people in over 200 cities across more than 50 countries, including those in our global delivery network, all passionate about executing for our clients. These three ingredients enable us to help our clients design their vision for the future and then turn it into reality. What's more, our passion for and commitment to our people and the communities in which we live and work are fundamental to our culture. The value we place in our people and on supporting their personal and professional growth is underlined by our ongoing series of awards for being a great employer. And our corporate citizenship initiative, Skills to Succeed, focuses on building skills that enable people around the world to participate in and contribute to the economy. Our goal, by 2015, we will equip 250,000 people around the world with the skills to get a job or build a business. Well, we're Accenture, and that's us in a nutshell. We hope you've enjoyed getting to know us better. To learn more, come and visit us. So, um, so Accenture is a global, worldwide organization. When um, when I started, we had uh, boy, it was under approximately 100,000 people. Um, now we're at uh, 350,000, so that's pretty cool. And Accenture never stops; it just keeps going. Okay. All right. And it's been, it's been exciting. When I started in our Washington, D.C. office, um, we also had around, uh, around 1,000 people. Uh, we made a couple acquisitions, and we've done a lot of, uh, a lot of growth. Washington, D.C. is now our largest office uh, in the United States, which uh, was a little surprising because we were big into oil and gas, so we had huge offices down in Texas. We were big into high tech, so we had big um, solution groups out of Silicon Valley doing a lot of uh, high-tech with Oracle and SAP uh, and Microsoft. We also had huge groups up in New York City, which was working with nine of the top 10 financial services institutions. So for our Washington, D.C. office to grow to that size, we're now 7,000 people. Uh, it's been a lot of government work that we've helped grow, and we've uh, had an equal amount of growth in the, um, just with commercial, commercial consulting. So Accenture today, it really, uh, really, it's five different, five different brands or five different companies, uh, things that we do. Uh, Cons Accenture Consulting, of which I'm a part of that group. This is the group that helps transform clients. So we will go and we'll look at an existing organization and we will help in transforming them to become more automated and to become more efficient. So where you see, uh, where you see maybe an organization focused 
will save 20, 30, 50 percent of the way that they're doing work today. And it may be through digital. So you guys heard a little bit about my, um, about Marriott. Marriott's a large client for Accenture. Uh, we helped set up their online tool, online tool to be able to help automate and be able to help people move in uh, book reservations. So through that, we've helped generate $7 billion of new revenue for Marriott. Uh, so there's a lot of, of, of those kind of stories. You know, one story that uh, has been interesting in the DC area has been you know, primary health care legislation, Obamacare. Um, there's one point where the system itself was failing, uh, did not have the correct in the interconnection. Accenture went in and helped to build up the whole online system behind that that connects all 50 states, state exchanges, and allows you know, a million people at a time to be able to go on and be able to process. So Accenture was sort of the core engine here in that. Now Accenture Consulting and Transforming, we work with a lot of the C-suite. So we'll work with the you know, CEO, the CFO, the Chief Procurement Officer, and we'll work uh, to be able to look at their organization, bring ideas, and efficiency. All right, Accenture Strategy, our strategy group, really is setting up uh, new organizations and helping them to be strategic um, with acquisitions and products, what they want to offer, and how they want to go to market. So we have a group in our strategy practice that does um, a lot of work around, around that. Accenture Digital is a newest organization, and this is helping uh, enable companies to be able to take advantage of all the digitization that's happening um, globally. So, uh, big, 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 actually it's becoming a third of Accenture at this point, working with uh, digitizing and um, automating um, in the digital area. Accenture technology, this is a lot of our technology practice. Uh, again, where we work with a lot of the core software products, and we do large and complex implementations. So some of the largest, most complex on a global basis. Uh, we recently have helped the Army go forward and implement a global system that works, uh, one SAP system that replaced 99 different legacy systems uh, in one, so you can see that. And then Accenture Operations. Accenture Operations is really about if a company doesn't want to, doesn't want to do the work themselves, they want to outsource that and have an organization do that maybe more efficiently than they ever could, then we do that. And therefore we have we have big operations, actually about 200,000 of our 350,000 people are in our operations group. We have big centers in India, in the Philippines, um, in the UK, where we're doing a lot of offshoring, and then we have some onshore processes as well. So a lot of different, a lot of different career opportunities you can see. Now within Accenture Consulting at the top, we do have a CFO practice that consults two CFOs around core financials, and automation of, of processes, and that's that's my bailiwick. That's where that's where I started. And I can be able to help, help build up. Okay, so a couple things uh, now. Now migrating, and talk just a little bit about uh, a couple myths, and then talking about the industry. Uh, people sometimes think that hey, accounting is bookkeeping, um, and that is not correct. Not true. Uh, bookkeepers usually do data entry. And then where they'll get to the point of stopping is where the accountants will then take over. And the accountants will come in and they will spend most of their time helping with decision making um, for organizations. Uh, but probably five of the most important words here, uh, accounting is the language of business. So any of you who take accounting, that's a very important class. And those of you who are majoring, uh, congratulations, because that's going to be the core language that most of these organizations are going to speak. And if you can understand that, um, it doesn't mean you have to be an accountant or even uh, have accounting as your core profession. Uh, I'm in consulting and I have stepped, stepped up and above just day-to-day -day debits and credits. So you can get into lots of different paths. Uh, myth number two, accounting is boring. How many of you guys think accounting is boring? Okay, we'll put your hands down because it's only a myth. Um, there's a lot of different exciting things. I'll talk just about a few career paths. Uh, when I was in Honolulu working, uh, one day I brought home an application uh, to Shannon. Thank you. Um, and 
Well, well, uh, probably the application has said, I can work for the FBI. Uh, and the FBI is in need of a, of a lot of accounts. Accounting is one of the entry programs into the FBI to become a special agent. And you actually get to track down people who don't pay their taxes. Uh, just like Al Capone, so it's not exciting. Um, but you had to carry a gun, and my wife was not a, not a fan of me carrying a gun, so that job was out. Okay. Um, a financial, you can be a financial advisor. Many times uh, they need, they go to their accountant or teacher consultant to be able to help make big financial decisions, and, and, and you, can, you can earn a percentage of the salary of your famous movie star that you're working for. The next one is true, a corporate entertainment account. Um, my father, who taught here, uh, after he left KPMG, he went and worked for MGM uh, movie production studio, and he was an accountant. So, you know when you watch the movies, and at the end they have like millions of people's names at the end, and they have one little accountant? So that's what, that was my that's goal was to see his name on there. Um, so you can you can help you can help in tracking and seeing if movies are going to make money or not. You know that's what that's what you did. You can work for a multi multi um, national corporation um, or a global CPA firm. Again, opportunities to move around. Forensic accounting is being a hot topic today with all of the uh, fraud and hacking and finding out where the flow of money is happening, uh, whether it's through terrorists or whether it's through uh, other organizations. Um, a lot of accountants are actually, and this is a big problem, uh, I was talking with um, someone who's part of the AICPA last week, and they said that we have this flow of accountants coming in, but uh, they're not staying in accounting, they're going into forensics accounting, they're going into business intelligence, they're going into big data, and they're using their analytical skills that they formed to be able to help, help, help track. <coughs> Not, not enough accounts, and I'm going to talk a little bit more about that. Uh, CFO, you can be a CFO for an organization, and again, helping them to make big decisions for their organization. You know, who are they going to merge with, with product lines, etc. Uh, tax accountant, auditors, uh, plant controllers, government accounts, uh, nonprofit accounts. So there's like lots of different fields in the accounting field to be able to go off and try and you can move from one to another and into various areas. So, again, exciting stuff. Okay, what is a CPA? So, one day I was driving, and um, my kids probably don't even remember this, but um, Brandon said, Dad, what is a CPA? And uh, I thought back, and when I was working over here at Ernst & Young, and we used to do a lot of work papers, and, uh, and I said, it stands for cut, pest, cut, paste, and assemble. That's what it is, Brandon, cut, paste, and assemble. And then um, my smart aleck daughter, Erica, says, no, CPA really stands for can't produce anything. <laughs> because she never sees me bringing anything home, I'm not building anything. And, uh, my, uh, and then my wife, Jen, Yes, says, um, no, what CPA really stands for is cheapest price available. <laughs> because she knows I like to get a good deal, right? And the, the real answer is uh, CPA is, uh, for me, couldn't pass again. So that's, uh, that's what it is. <laughs> Very hard example. All right. So CPA is the, uh, it's the, highest, it's the highest part of our profession. And... This is a goal that uh, will truly change your life. As I showed on my journey, this was a milestone that sets. And once you have your CPA, you have this pathway available that you'll never be unemployed. You'll always have opportunities that will be ahead of you. Um, as many of you know, there's requirements. It takes a bachelor's, it takes a master's degree in many states now, 150 hours. You have to pass the CPA exam. And then you need, uh, depending on the state, one to two years of experience underneath the CPA. So all those things need to come into play. But if you're willing to go down and put the work in for that, uh, it'll truly change your life. Okay. Other facts about the CPA, and this is this is we're really on a very interesting time you know, right now in the world where. 75% of all CPAs are going to be retiring or near retiring by 2018. A 
okay? So there's a lot of elderly CPAs. As they drop out of this profession, there's this huge need for CPAs. And just like I talked about with the AICPA, accountants are being sucked over into these other areas, whether it's into forensic or into big data business intelligence. So the amount of accountants that are going into the, the, the demand versus the need is really turning inverse. And the demand is going to be huge. So if you have an opportunity to drive in and go into accounting and get your CPA, by 2018, there's going to be a huge demand. All right. The AICPA is actually changing some of its grading criteria to be able to get more CPAs, meaning they're making it easier. So good, good to know. All right. Internationally, there's a number of people that are taking the CPA exam, almost 10%. Um, almost 10% are taking the CPA exam. So. All right, now in addition to the CPA, I talked about other certifications. There's great certifications out there. And whether you're getting one or two or multiple, um, these are all great. Certified Management Accountant, Internal Auditor, Financial Manager, Fraud Examiner, Chief Financial Planner, you know, just a lot, of, a, lot of great, a lot of great pathways. All right, so how do I become an elephant? Or how do I become an accountant? You, know, you can see my elephant picture there, huh? Uh, it's not easy, right? If it was easy, everybody would uh, would be going into it. But if you're willing to put in the hard work and willing to get your degree, um, then you're able to you're going to get out of it. You know, a number of really critical things. Number one, you're going to have a, a critical thinking, problem solving, and research skills. I would challenge all of you guys to research and look at what's happening in the world around us. I'll show some research in just a moment here, but keep up with what the world is saying and you'll find out where those opportunities will be. You'll be able to grasp those and you'll be able to get onto a very good career path, uh, especially for the men in the room. This is a tremendous way to be able to provide for a great, stable career money making uh, business for you um, and wives as well. My wife also is an accountant. I don't know if I mentioned that Shannon Beautiful. There's also an accountant and graduated in accounting here from BYU. Hawaii. So, um, very good. All right, you'll come up with, um, you'll learn thorough knowledge of correct accounting procedures. You'll end up with uh, financial management expertise and you'll offer, you'll get a job in accounting. In Washington, D.C., we have less than 1% unemployment um, and 0% in the accounting area. So, there's just not enough from what the, the jobs are needed. All right, jobs are competitive, especially if you're gonna go into the top organizations, those global organizations. Um, and an internship is probably very important. Uh, if you think you're gonna go down the path of working for a big four, it's gonna take you a year of planting seeds, connecting with firms, networking, building, your, building out those who are, have gone before you and starting to plant the seeds. If you get an internship, there's a 90% chance that you'll you'll get a full-time employment. So very very strong. All right. So again, um, again, everyone who's an accountant, raise your hand in accounting. Again, just awesome, awesome. All right. The good news is, uh, according to all the research, accountants will have the highest percentage of job offers of any career that's going to come out of this university. So you guys will have the opportunity to be able to go forward. Um, followed by that is going to be economics, computer science, engineering. Uh, these are all, all hot. We hire a lot of engineers at Accenture, and they usually go into the computer science field. So we like the, we like the deep math that they have and the um, ability to be able to think. Computer science is also a very, very hot area. Uh, when, we won, when we won the healthcare.gov project, we had to hire 600, 600 people, a lot of Java coders, programmers, and we needed people who had an engineering in their background. All right, so 10,000 10, bachelors who got their bachelor's degree in accounting uh, last year, 60% went into the workforce, about 23% went into graduate school, and 17% were unsure of life. Okay. <laughs> All right. Uh, 
prospects, prospects for those who are uh, going into accounting graduates, again, congratulations. Um, number one need, number one need in the United States is teachers. So you can see 600,000 approximately elementary teachers. Uh, 400,000 secondary and 250 middle schools, so you're looking at about 1.3 million jobs in teaching. So there's a huge opportunity there. But number two, number two off, off of all of that is accountants and auditors, 500,000. That's what they're going to need um, in the next few years. So again, the statistics are showing that accounting is a great field to go in. After that, and again, people going into computers, Look here, they add computer systems analysts, computer software engineers, network and system communication, and computer software engineering system software. Those are four out of the top ten. So if you're in accounting or education or computers, these are great fields to be able to get a job uh, coming, out of, coming out of here. And I've, and I've, left, uh, I've left the um, sources on here so you can take a look. Uh, top employers, okay, so these are the top employers on a global basis, all right, top 10, you're going to see uh, a mix of different firms on here, um, but I want to point out the big four are in the top four employers on a global basis, so you see Ernst & Young, PricewaterhouseCoopers, Deloitte, and KPMG. You'll also see tech firms, you'll see Google, you'll see Microsoft, you'll see Apple, so they're also big hires, uh, people directly out of school in those fields, um, and then a few other firms. But they're hiring, and it's not just all accountants that they're hiring, they're, counting, they're hiring just good graduates who can think and be sharp and, and work for these organizations. So th this is where a lot of the new hires are going. All right, as you break out and look at the top consulting firms, here's the top 20 consulting firms globally. So I circled, uh, I circled the three, the three that I've had the opportunity of working for: KPMG, Ernst and Young, and Accenture. Now, if you look at the pyramid up here, you'll see there's a lot of different types of consulting. There's those that are on the strategy angle that are at the top. They mean um, those are like the, the Baines and the McKinseys and AT Carneys. These are the guys that help to strategize and how an organization is going to work forward. Then you get into that middle layer, which is the big four accounting, Accenture, and IBM. These are the guys that are actually going to implement the solutions. They're going to take the theory and they're going to make it happen and they're actually going to change the culture and change the organization. They're the get it done companies. All right. Then you have, uh, then you have another bottom tier to get into more specialties and into niches. So for those of you who want to start in accounting, then you can go off into this broad world of all different types of consulting. And that's what's been such a joy uh, for me to be able to try so many different things, work so many different customers, and never get bored. Um, accounting could have a tendency of doing debits and credits and getting bored in a, in a, in a small capacity, but you have the opportunity of going big, right? Okay, this morning I got a little link to this hit, and I just put this in here. Um, if you look at Fortune Magazine, the top 100 companies to work for, uh, you'll see all of the big four. I also threw um, Accenture and Google in there. What to me is very interesting is in this world of change that's happening around us with companies, most of the big four are moving up their ranks very quickly. So you can see KPMG moved up 20 spots. You can see EY moved up you know, 30 spots. Um, Accenture moved up 15 spots, so we're beginning to see um, just a number. <coughs> and if you go and you read these, you'll find out why. Why are they in the top? Well, they offer great benefits. They offer great perks. You know, company uh, Google, very interesting. Uh, they offer you three meals a day that are organically cooked, that are very healthy. <laughs> they have all you can eat snacks. They do things around their campuses that are making it exciting and making it uh, enticing. Okay, what are the salaries? So if you go forward, people are graduating. If you look at Robert Half, according to their salary guides, most people out of college are gonna get anywhere from 45 to 75. And this is a good for you to start setting expectations for what you can, what you can get into. Uh, if you look at entry-level accounting salaries, 
um, 37 to 75. Again, if you have your CPA, it'll probably be 10 to 20 percent more than that. Uh, if you're in the bigger cities, I think you'll get to 100 grand fairly quick with the CPA. So these are your one cents a while. Okay. So that that kind of gives you an expectation. All right. Three pieces of advice, uh, just generally. Number one. Enjoy what you do. You have to like what you're going to do. If you don't like something, then it's probably not going to be a great career path. However, you can graduate in a degree and you can pick your path. So pick what is employable, would be my big advice. Pick a field that you've just seen the research on that can give you a great career path that will allow you to be able to sustain and take care of a family. All right? Number two, write down your dreams. Write down the goals that you have. It'll become so much more real for you if you write down what your goals are. When my wife and I, Shannon, you got married, then we wrote down we wrote down a list of like 25 or 30 different things. We've gone back on that list and we've checked the box on so many of them because we set goals uh, around those things. So I would I would definitely advise that. Uh, there's a book called The Power of One by Terry Keller. Uh, it talks about setting goals one goal in each various areas uh, what's one thing that you can do that will benefit you um, and it'll take take over other goals uh, you can do this for your spiritual life for your physical health for your personal life for your relationships which relationships are most important to you uh, for your business for those of you who are in entrepreneurship and you want to start up a business what a tremendous opportunity to be able to Look at those who've gone before you, learn about your profession, you know, become an expert in that um, for your finances. And look ahead. Look ahead at what's, uh, what you want to do. Where do you want to be five years from now? And where do you want to be someday? If you write down that, if you want to be a CPA, what are the intermediary steps to get there? Where are you going to have to, to work for to, to get that? And then you start breaking it down into one-year goals, and monthly goals, and daily goals, and what you got to do right now. And if you set your goals, then that will that'll establish the path that you'll know. Just like I set a goal, uh, <coughs> yes, and eventually got that. Okay, um, do hard things. You guys can all do hard things. And this is my last last piece of advice. Whether it's set, whether it's uh, setting setting a goal to take the CPA exam, which is not going to be easy. A lot of people give up. But can you endure and take those obstacles and make them move them out of the way? Uh, can you go and volunteer to move to a city and build up a practice for your firm? What can that do for you and yourself and you personally? And can you build a practice? This is a hard thing, hard thing that I did. But each of you can go forward and do hard things that will set and establish, establish a pathway for you. So with that, I know we're at the um, top of the time. Are there um, a question or two? Yes. Why do so many people give up when, like, what's kind of the assembly was the process of becoming a CPA? Why did you say so many people give up while doing There's, um, you know what, in our family, I had two brothers, and I tried to get both of them to take the CPA exam, and it's hard. It takes a lot of studying. Uh, it's the kind of exam that you can't win. It's probably going to take uh, 500 to 1,000 hours of personal study, even with review courses. Uh, four parts, some people will take it and they'll stop and they'll just say, I can't do it. Or they'll never take it all together. They'll never find the time. They'll get into, into life. So, uh, I don't know why people give up. What else? Yeah, uh, my name is Jordan Mack, I'm a business finance student and uh, in your talk you mentioned that it's important to keep up with what the world is saying. Now I was wondering uh, what news sources keep abreast of the times. Yeah. Depending on the uh, depending on the industry that you go in, there's a lot of specialized uh, publications. There's a lot of publicized, uh, digitized um, networks that will tell you exactly what you do. As I focus on the government, every morning I will read uh, 10 minutes on what's going on across the federal landscape, what's important to the CFO, what's changing, what kind of new regulations. So you can get on these blogs and on these uh, news networks and just depending on where you're going, if you're going into high-tech, manufacturing, et cetera, and they'll tell you. Yeah. 
Great question. Including in general, I want to start with good, part, good partners on your own expertise and experience. So what's what's more important? Experience versus grades versus networking? Good question. Uh, I definitely I definitely think uh, my experience here in working for the big four in Honolulu was that the University of Hawaii was very tied in, so the network was very important. Uh, so you had to build those networks. So coming to the um, <coughs> networking is going to give you an edge up. It's those people you know that will get your resume to the stack. So that's important. You're going to have to have uh, you're going to have to have a a, a base. Uh, probably three to three five on your GPA, and then showing things that you can do outside. So you will need a base level of expertise. Um, I think to work for any of those big four, you'll, you'll need that, and you'll need some networking. So they're probably all important. Good question. Is there a hand? Yes. So do your company, uh, does your company um, hire potential candidates for international students? Yes. Or yes, we do. We do. So we're we're a global organization. We do we do work in uh, about 54 different countries, and it's um, because it's a big organization. It's making the right connections to get you in. And I haven't cracked all of those codes. I have for the Washington D.C. area, um, but it's getting the right connections. And we have big offices in a lot of different a lot of different places. And I can show you that list. And so, uh, does that according to where you're from, or for example, if I want to, if you want to work in the U.S., do your company or um, sponsor or thing? Or? It's usually it's usually best to go to where the jobs are themselves versus hoping that the job is going to be open for you in your specific place. I didn't choose Indiana, but I went there, and that provided an incredible opportunity for me. I didn't ever see myself moving to Washington D.C. Because uh, I was a West Coast individual, but I did. I went and I embraced that. And that'd be a huge advice that I give to everyone: is get out of your comfort, go to where the opportunities are. Um, if you want to conquer Google, you probably got to go and be right in Google's headquarters area. You know, to be able to go, so go where the jobs are. Yes. Yes. Is due to my wife? Most definitely. All of it. All of my. You know, he was working full time and studying for the CP exam. And when you first start out, I mean, he was working 60, 70 hours a week. So that's one thing. You need to know when you go in, but you know, don't think that it's an eight to five job. You're going to work nights, you're going to work weekends, sometimes you have to work all night long. And so while he was studying, he was trying to study the exam at the same time as working full time. And that was really challenging, trying to find that life work balance. Um, but I knew that it was really important to him, that was the goal that he had, and so I supported it. You know, did what I could to help him. At that time to study and eventually pass the exam. And it was very rewarding at the end of it. So the sacrifices early on are really important. It's all sacrifices when you start out. And you just need to know that hard work is sacrifice. I will be around this whole afternoon. Uh, I, interviews this afternoon, but come up and talk to me, ask individual questions. Uh, but thank you all, and I hope some of you will go into accounting now. <laughs>